Hello everyone, welcome back. This is day number 17 of 30 Days of Truth. And we are simply trying to, to walk in the steps of Elihu in the midst of this pandemic. Elihu was a guy in the book of Job. Uh, uh, in the midst of Job's crisis, he decided to lift up and declare eternal truths about God uh, in the midst of Job's circumstance. And God honored that and manifested in Job's crisis and brought about uh, a complete turn of events for Job. And we're believing that as we obey the Holy Spirit in this, that we're going to see him manifest not only in our lives, but in our friends and family and our churches and community and in this nation um, just by this simple act of obedience. So um, today we're going to be talking about the eternal truth that God is our defender, okay? And the first point we're gonna we're gonna address is that Jesus completely protects us. And my wife Andrea is gonna help me read today. Just let them know what verse you're gonna read first. All right. So first we have Psalms 48:3 says God Himself is in Jerusalem's towers, revealing Himself as its defender. All right. Um. So, <clears throat> thank you, Ben. Um, the word defender here in Psalms 48, it's, it's a Hebrew word called misgab. And it means stronghold, refuge, high fort. Okay? That's, that's, that's the word there used for, for the word defender. Now, that idea, that concept of God being a high fort and a stronghold for us um, is going to come into play when we talk about our second point today. Um, and, and it's going to be a really cool uh, uh, picture for us that God's painted in his word. All right, you want to take the second um, Second verse will be Psalm 68, 4 through 5. Sing praises to God and do his name. Sing loud praises to him who rides the clouds. His name is the Lord. Rejoice in his presence. Father to the fatherless, defender of the widows, this is God, whose dwelling is holy. All right, amen. Um, <clears throat> he defends the fatherless, and he defends the widows. And I'm sure in the midst of this time, there's a lot of widows out there that are going through a hard time. We have two widows that live, one in front of us, and the other on the side of us, you know. And uh, we know that God has promised to look after them, but we have to do our part to check in on them as well. And, uh, you know, but God has swore in his word to, de to defend them, okay, to be their refuge. Third verse is going to be Proverbs 22, verse 22 through 23. Don't rob the poor just because you can, or exploit the needy in court. For the Lord is their defender. He will ruin anyone who ruins them. Those are pretty strong words, uh, in my estimate. Um, the Word of God saying that God will ruin anyone who ruins, uh, ruins the poor. Um, he takes um, equity uh, very seriously, right? The idea of a, a balance of justice, you know, between one party and another. And uh, when he sees that the balance is always tipped against the poor... You know, that never sits well with God because he has sworn his war in his word to be their defender, okay? And so we need to keep that in mind, especially during this time. Maybe you're a business owner, uh, you know, that remember that, that um, you know, that if you're able to pay your employees still, that you would do that whatever they're working for you and uh, that God will bless you in that, um, you know, as you obey his word. So... Um, the second point we're going to talk about is, uh, you know, Jesus completely protects us, um, you know, but intimacy with Jesus is the key to his protection, okay? And uh, I don't like Yeah. So this first, first one is going to be Psalms 91, verse 1 through 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. 
All right, thanks, babe. Um, <clears throat> this says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow, okay? This is, this is the idea of, um, you know, God being our covering, being our shelter, right? And when he does that, there's a shadow that is produced from, from that covering. And, uh, but notice it says that we have, to, um, uh, we have to dwell in the shelter, okay? That, that's a, that indicates a closeness, right? Uh, I have to come inside my house for my house to protect me. I can't just be away from it, all right? And then the last verse we have here is James 4, 8 through 10. And this is going to help tie it back to what we were talking about, um, the, the Hebrew word uh, miskab uh, earlier. Uh, James 4, 8 through 10 says this, draw near to God and he will draw near to you, right? We're talking about intimacy, uh, coming into that, that place of shelter. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the Greek word here uh, for exalt is hypsu. And it means this, to lift up on high, to elevate. All right? So, in, in our first uh, example... Um, we said that God, uh, uh, God himself dwells in Jerusalem's towers. So picture you have Jerusalem, and you have these towers, uh, high towers, you know, on the outside of the wall, okay? Places of protection, all right? Where God protects us. God overlooks our every aspect of our life and everything, okay? And... Uh, Let's pretend we're out here. We're outside of Jerusalem. But God says if we draw near to him, okay, if we draw near to him, if we come into Jerusalem, we're able to come into these towers. And it says that he, when we draw near to him, that in due season, he would lift us up. So the question is, lift us up to where? Well, he answers that back in, in Psalm 48.3. Lift us up to his high tower, all right, because that's where he is. And he wants us to be there with them, uh, to dwell with his security and his protection because he has sworn that he's going to be our defender. So during this time, right, we need God uh, defending our finances. We need God defending our health, uh, def defending our spiritual well-being uh, our, our well as um, we're all cooped up at home. Um, you know, we want God to defend our minds and, and not give in to fear give in to anxiety, you know, and God has said that um, he will do that. He will defend us if we draw near to him. So be blessed, and uh, Ange, can you pray and just ask God that if anyone is struggling uh, mentally or physically, that God would heal them? Amen. Uh, so what we do is just to pray for that, Lord God. Anyone who's watching this, and even um, friends of friends, Lord God, that if they are dealing with with uh, any health issues, whether it's mental or physical, Lord God, we just pray just that you would touch their lives right now, Lord God. We pray that you would bring hope to them, restoration to them, healing to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, come back tomorrow for day 18 of 30 Days of Truth. And uh, we'll just con continue to believe for God to manifest in our lives. All right, be blessed.